In about uh, 2010, Elizabeth emailed me from work and said she'd followed uh, half a dozen motorcycles out to Seashelt, and she figured it was about time we bought another motorcycle. And I reluctantly agreed. And we, <laughs> and we bought a 1985 BMW motorcycle. The one rule was that the only time I was allowed to ride solo was as far as Upper Gibsons. And we live in Lower Gibsons. All the rest of the time, Elizabeth was to be with me. And I think the idea was that if I did something stupid on the bike and killed myself, that she'd be right behind me. Uh, Elizabeth's idea of long distance motorcycle riding, maximum 120 miles in a day, and uh, you know, with several antique shopping. On this particular trip, she came back with uh, three extra pairs of shoes that she hadn't left with. Uh, my, my idea for, of long distance riding is a little bit greater than that. And I, in 2012, I abandoned my promise of the Upper Gibsons thing uh, to head to Texas to join up with 200 motorcyclists who rode from El Paso to Nelson, BC in uh, three days, three and a half days, camping on the way. I pulled into this campsite, this was in Utah, um, after dark, and I, and I sat against the motorcycle, listening to the engine, you know, cooling, ticking away as it cooled, having cheese and crackers and a, uh, and a, a cold beer, wondering what it was gonna greet me when I woke up the next morning. Robert Perzig, author of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance says it this way, you see things on a motorcycle in a way that is completely different from any other. In a car, you're always in a compartment and because you're used to it, you don't realize that through the window, everything you see is just more TV. You're a passive observer and it's all moving by in, boringly in a frame. On a, on a cycle, the frame is gone. You're completely in contact with it all. You're in the scene, not just watching it and the sense of presence is overwhelming, can't read my own writing. And the whole thing, the whole experience is never far removed from immediate consciousness. And you're riding on the motorcycle, I, I see it like artwork, I missed that previous one, but that was an aerial shot, um, and it looks like artwork to me. And you're riding in the heat and the, and the elements that are, are, are carving these, these magnificent monuments. And when it's hot, you sweat, when it's cold, you, you dress up warm and, and you get a bit of a chill and when you're when it rains You're part of the same forces that create the these sculptures. This is Antelope Canyon and you're, you're just as I say you're just you're just part of the whole experience and the water would get forced through these slot canyons and and make these magnificent carvings and and weavings and, and sculptures um, and uh, it's just you know, just just mind blowing when you're when you're there. When you're when you're riding along, you can smell the earth, and you can you can uh, smell the crops that you're you're riding beside. You don't have air conditioning, and 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 you just experience it firsthand. Um, my only companion on the trip uh, down was my GPS, um, aptly named Garmin, of course. And uh, most times we got along. Occasionally, uh, we had disagreements about uh, the best route to go. Um, this one particular instance, I was riding along a straight stretch of road, nicely paved, uh, leading up to this uh, area. This is um, San Juan River, uh, the gray line there. And uh, Garmin was getting more and more frantic uh, the further along I went, kept insisting I turn around immediately. And I finally got to this uh, top of this cliff overlooking uh, Monument Valley and realized what he was so upset about. And, this was a hundred foot, or a hundred uh, foot, sorry, a thousand foot drop, and uh, we, I wound my way down this single lane dirt track uh, over three miles to get down to the bottom, and it was, it was a highlight of my trip. It's funny, it was only three miles, but it was a highlight, one of my highlights of my trip. This is Bryce Canyon, and another piece of, of artwork, and it, I always felt like I was, I was traveling in somebody's creation, and these rugged rocks and yet they're pasted, uh, um, painted in these, these wonderful pastel colors. If I saw this in Disneyland, I think it was fake. Uh, thunderstorms were about a, a daily event. Um, they never came unannounced and uh, you know, first the uh, harmless clouds would kind of mount together and, and form a, a bullying gray mass. Then the wind would pick up and the temperature would drop and I'd uh, stop and put on my rain gear. Every uh, time I camped, I carved a, a trench around my tent 
You can see it around the lower part there. And uh, this one, the uh, thunderstorm was in the afternoon when I stopped for the day and I had to sprint out in my underwear and, and, ch and hack out the uh, trench which wasn't deep enough. It wasn't until I finished that I saw the car opposite there with his wipers going, watching this crazy hatchet waving Canuck. <laughs> These I was disappointed to find that, that they're actually a, a legitimate breed of cow. Um, I stopped because they reminded me of those saddle shoes. And, <laughs> But apparently they're belted Galloways, and I, as I say, I was kind of disappointed they actually had a, a legitimate name. The uh, finally got to El Paso, and I figured it was a young man's game, this uh, long distance riding. <laughs> this, is, this is 3 a.m. on the start. The average age of the riders was 65. The, the oldest guy was 85. The oldest woman uh, rider was uh, 78, I believe. There was a guy who actually carted his oxygen tanks with him, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, we would spread out pretty quickly on the ride, and uh, I, most times I rode solo. I, I didn't have another motorcyclist in sight, but uh, invariably we'd catch up to a few um, on the, uh, at the gas stations. There was only, th only a couple rules. You had to start between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. from El Paso. You had to finish by 9 p.m. On the, on the fourth day at Nelson, and you had to buy th uh, pass through three checkpoints, and this was one of the checkpoints. And uh, it was, it, yeah, it was just a, an, an incredible trip. Um, and each day, you know, I'd be exhausted. I, I rode 700 miles in what was my longest day, which was 16 hours in the saddle. And each day I was always glad to, to get off the bike and get into bed, but only so I could ride the next day. And uh, yeah, and I, and I made it to Nelson in, in the, uh, at uh, 11 o'clock the, the last morning.